Hello, Cudu Nation, and welcome to a great edition of Tame the Flame. We're in Georgia. It's dreary, it's wet, it's overcast, it's nasty, and nothing is more comforting than a poiky call on a day like today. I'm out here with my trusty sidekick, Kruger, the Kudu mascot, and we're going to teach you guys how to use our poiky, our Dutch oven, to cook over the open fire and make a fantastic dish that is so famous throughout South Africa. A poiky calls is essentially a, a layered stew and you're going to cook your meat in first and you're going to brown it and put it in the base with some beef broth to cook over several hours. As that breaks down you're going to layer your hard vegetables like your potatoes, your onions, your whole garlic and then as that continues to cook out then you're going to layer your soft vegetables like your mushrooms, your carrots and your spices. We've got thyme, rosemary, and coriander as kind of the stars of our spices along with salt and pepper. We've got some beef broth and red wine. And then finally, uh, I'm kind of a fool for this Pirate's Gold. Uh, you can get that here in the U.S. It's kind of a West Indies beef spice, and I think it really just sets off the flavor. So we're going to use the open fire system today just for the poiki. You know, Kudu sells a poiki arm that we could have it raised up if we had more hot coals and we could be grilling or sauteing and do a variety of things. But I'm just gonna focus on the kudu today. We're gonna to knock this out and we're gonna teach you how to make the very best stew or poke uh that you've ever tasted. So very excited about that. I'll break this down for you. It's something that you can do if you've got three or four hours on, a, on an afternoon where you can cook this amazing meal with your friends and family. And it's such a hearty dish, it's absolutely like an excellent chili or an excellent stew. This is the way to do it. We're going to show you how. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is brown our meat. So I've got lamb neck here and some lamb chops. And you're going to want to brown that meat before you cook it over a long period of time inside the poiki so that fat can render. And you can really get those juices flowing on that meat. So I've got lamb neck here and some chops. And we'll brown this quickly. And then we'll move that into our poiki after we render down some uh, onions and garlic. Okay, so we're browning our lamb, and you don't want to overcook this. Sometimes you'll see some poiki recipes that call for you to put some flour on these to brown it better. Um, I'm not going that route just for something a little bit more healthy, but um, it's very common for you to put flour on these when you brown them. Um, what's nice is I can just use the kudu to um, move the food onto the grill and let it rest up there and then I can focus on the poiki. So these are browning nicely, about done. Um, we'll move these up on the on the kudu itself and be ready to go. So I've browned the lamb, I've swung the cast iron off. It's a hot pan but it's okay because on the kudu you can just move it out of the way. I've got the lamb resting up here. It's going to be going back into the poiki shortly, but now it's about heat management and coal management. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is put some oil into your poiki, get it nice and hot, and I'm just going to use this little bit of coal right here, just this little bit is enough to get this poiki nice and hot. So we're going to drop this in here, and let it sit right there in the base, and we're going to let this get warm with some oil, and then we're going to go ahead and um, fry some onions in here, and then we're going to add our meat back with our beef broth. Okay, so I've added the pearl onions and the garlic, and there's some oil in here, and I've just added some salt and pepper. So I'm just moving these around and letting these cook in. I mean, you're going to let them kind of sweat, and, and you don't want them to, to brown too much, but once that gets set in, we're going to add our beef broth and then we're gonna add our lamb back to it and we're gonna move some of these coals away and now we wanna start that kind of low and slow bubbling that's gonna take place over the next few hours. And I'll show you how we're gonna manage our coals and it's a super simple thing to do and a lot of fun. So we're gonna keep cooking these in and we'll be ready to go soon enough. All right, our onions are nice and cooked in and our garlic, it smells amazing. We're gonna add in our lamb now. So we're gonna put the lamb neck and the lamb chops right on top of these onions in here. Uh, some people would say you remove the onions and deglaze the pan. Um, I'm not gonna go that route. I am, um, again, I've got the ability with the kudu to do everything separate. So I can come in here and add this lamb 
and then put in the broth and we're, we're just cooking. We're still moving forward. And the idea at this point is to cover this meat and then move the charcoal to get this to a nice low and slow temperature. So what's nice about the kudu is having all these levels that I can manage this and now I'll use my coal tongs to move some of this coal away and make sure we're not cooking this too fast. You want a nice slow bubbling effect with your with your poiki. Okay, so I've added the lamb and the beef broth to the poiki. I've moved the majority of the hot coals away. And I've just got a few coals under there managing the heat. So it's a slow bubble going on. I've got a lot of charcoal if I need it to move it over. If this side of the poiki gets too hot, I can just simply turn it like this and then I'll get that even cooking. So it's real easy to manage the heat in the kudu fire base. Um, as you cook, you're gonna wanna make sure you have some consistent flavor in there. So what I like to do is add a little bit of red wine to the broth. It's always good for you. About a cup there. Oops. Um, and then again, my natural herbs, got rosemary and thyme and coriander. I want to sprinkle some of that in there. And I really just want to let this meat render for a while. And, and then this last pirate's gold. Can't get enough of this stuff. Let's put a little bit of that in there. And we're just going to let this cook down over the next probably hour before we add the potatoes. If this runs out and it's reduced too quickly, you can always add water, but you don't want to dilute that flavor. But it's so easy to manage this over time and let these vegetables steam up. Now we're going to add our potatoes. So again, um, the fluid, the, the liquid has cooked down um, probably about, had cooked down about an inch. And I'm just going to layer this in now. And again, the, the, the liquid, uh, just the, the potatoes and the onions are just barely over the top of the liquid. That's kind of my indication of where I want to be. So if it cooks down and I'm seeing a lot more vegetable than liquid, then I need to add liquid and vice versa. If I'm seeing um, only liquid, then I need to let this cook for a while until that can lower. And that's kind of how I'm managing it. But I'm leaving everything layered and I won't touch it as I cook through the whole process. All we've got left are the carrots and the mushrooms, and that'll come about an hour from now. So we'll let this go for a while, and then we'll check back in. Okay, so we've been at this poiki cost for about two to two and a half hours. Um, everything's cooking in quite nicely. You can see all the steam coming up and cooking these potatoes. Um, so now we're gonna layer in our soft vegetables and we'll then just manage the amount of liquid in here and the temperature control over a long period of time until we finish it. So I've got extra liquid here, I've got salt and pepper, and then I've got our mushrooms that we're gonna pour in here now. And our carrots. And again, we're not gonna, we'll move these around to make a flat surface, but we are not gonna touch these, we're not gonna mix what's already in there. These are essentially going to steam from the bottom up and it's going to make for a great finish and an absolutely wonderful dish. Okay guys, so we've been at this for about three hours. About 20 minutes ago I added the mushrooms and the carrots. I just simply laid that on top. You can see it now steaming. So it's going to steam the mushrooms and the carrots and everything's going to cook down probably an inch to an inch and a half over the next hour, low and slow. And then we'll take it off and it'll be ready to go. When you actually dish up, uh, the meat's gonna have fallen off those neck bones. The lamb is gonna be just absolutely tender. It's gonna mix in with the potatoes, um, with the onions, the garlic, and the mushrooms, and the carrots, and it's gonna be absolutely divine. Um, some people like to thicken their stews up. Um, if you do that, typically you'll see it in South Africa done with a 
tomato paste. Obviously, there's a different ways to do that. I tend to just let the actual bowl thicken the meal up once you break into the potatoes and the onions and everything starts to absorb um, together. It's, it's plenty thick for us, so that's how I like to do it. And again, such an awesome, simple dish. I mean, even in the time we cooked this over the last three hours, the sun's come out. We've got a beautiful cold winter weekend. We're going to be enjoying this and watching the NFL playoffs. What a great way to spend the weekend with your family and your friends. So try the lamb neck quickie cost or go get you, uh, you know, some spare ribs or go get you um, an oxtail and do the same exact thing. It will be absolutely divine. Check us out on another edition of Kudu Nation. Until then, tame the flame. Thank you.